This is Meredith McCormick, Secretary of the Roger Sherman Building Committee. It is Tuesday, October 5th at 7.05 p.m. and Chairman Lang will take over. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. This is Chairman Eric Lang. The meeting is officially called to order. Um, this first uh, item on the agenda is an update from me on the Board of Selectmen meeting. Um, and the OSCG and R, and any further updates. So um, I think to take the first item, um, uh, I think after this uh, meeting tonight, um, and I think later on in the agenda, we um, are going to act upon uh, um, or make a decision as a committee to uh, disband, I will reach out to the, um, the Board of Selectmen meeting to um, confirm our intention to do so and then officially do so with them. Um, so that's that. Um, the OSCG and R, um, uh, I know um, uh, everything has been uh, submitted and um, uh, um, Sal, I'm just trying to pull up my notes here um, on what uh, um, our anticipated reimbursement is. Um, let's see. Uh, so um, the filing is complete um, and I think as of uh, August uh, 10th, um, and we submitted uh, $2,780,761 in eligible costs. The reimbursement rate is 25.36%, um, which would mean um, if everything holds, that the town of Fairfield um, would see $705,200.99 in reimbursement. Um, that would be subject to OSCG in our audit. Um, so as I understand it, and Sal, correct me if I'm wrong, there's no further action required by um, the committee at this time. Um, and no, nope. yes, that is, for... that is correct. That is correct, Eric. Uh, no, no actions by the building committee, and no further actions required by the board of ed or other boards for the OSCGNR filing. Eric, can you please repeat yeah. um, the amount that we submitted as of um, August tenth? Um, sure. It was. Uh, Two million seven hundred eighty thousand seven hundred and sixty one dollars. Um, and I have no further updates, but if there are any other questions from the committee on the yeah, I, I have a couple of I do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if Rich. the um, if, Sal, if the submittal that you present to the OSCG and R uh, is somehow an item is challenged or something like that, that they don't want to cover something, um, okay. how does that? If there's no committee left, how does how do, how does that get resolved? Who who is the arbiter of the? Uh, it's very draconian, actually. Um, when we finally get to the point of audit uh, and the technicality that they uh, um, would come up with at this point is probably something more procedural, such as we cannot produce, uh, uh, for instance, we cannot produce the advertisement 
for bidding for some item that we purchased. Right. Um, and, um, you know, Gerald might come up with, you know, we, we advertised it here and here and posted it here, and they might come up with something. There's the wrong, uh, that newspaper had the wrong circulation. Right. You're, you're uh, I'm, talking about I'm using a bad thing. example, but yeah, I know. You're uh, talking about that, that's usually what it comes up as. Yeah. Where, where I'm getting at is, is apart from, yeah, and that's one item, or there's, uh, you know, being in construction myself, there's, there's things that change in the code that all of a sudden were applicable back then and approved back then, and all of a sudden they're not approved, and we have an arguable point. And, uh, you know, so my ultimate um, position on this is the non-dissolution of the committee. And I'm not looking to prolong, prolong the agony, but I've just found that it's so hard to resurrect the committee sometimes when you have to, <coughs> as, as opposed to just maintaining the executive committee for, uh, you know, uh, un unlimited time, such as a year, year and a half, whatever, until all the possibilities are resolved. And then it doesn't get into... A political thing. It's it's the law and what and and what the committee that's a legal entity determines. Uh, the um, to answer that question, the uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what the committee would be able to do in an audit. Um, and, and Gerald can jump in on this also. Uh, it's it's really. Uh, boring and dry stuff. It's not necessarily. I know. I know. Challenging. The stuff, the stuff of legal it, matters, and that's where I'm coming from. Yes. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I, and I'm, there's I'm, nothing I'm, that you can. It, there's nothing yeah. that a building committee could actually change. Uh, we, we can provide more information. Uh, we still have colliers. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's one of those things that we would assume that. Uh, you know, colliers would still be there because they're just yeah, but on so many of our jobs yeah, to provide yeah, information. To, all right, but at some point we're going to dismiss colliers, even though I know that they have a general contract with the town of Fairfield, and this becomes another billable item or something that we need them for, and, and how do we do that if we're not still in committee? It's if it became something billable, I, I mean, we would uh, uh, we would find it we would find it somewhere to take care of it. But I, I I'm extremely hard pressed to, to think of a reason why it would become that. Uh, just just to let you know how these audits go, we are uh, we just got the letter uh, that Fairfield Ludlow High School project is going into audit. That was finished right. in 2015. I know. I'm <laughs> just, just to give you, a, yeah. <laughs> just to give you an idea sure. how know, long it so. takes. And, I know. Um, That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is much the bad part on that is they didn't get to Fairfield Woods, which was finished in 2013, uh, 2012. Um, so it, it, it's a very odd thing, and what they're – and, and and the the argument point that you're getting on is uh twenty five percent of maybe a ten thousand dollar item um, that that might pop up uh, while you know money is money um, at, at the end it's here's here's where I'm coming mm -hmm. from so uh, this yeah. has been uh, on a federal facility in which I was involved, and now we're finding out that FEMA doesn't want to pay the money that was allocated for, you know, in millions of dollars on Penfield Pavilion. And, and the town is, yeah, I, I, I could see a big problem for the town. And, and, and God, I mean, I hope to God we're not in the same situation. As, but it's just having experience with this, okay, uh, you know, I'm perhaps belaboring it too much. If uh, I, I just, I'm offering my comments for the, the, the Committee to consider. That's it. I'll stop it there. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, if Meredith. Um, yeah. I just want everyone know that Brian is is now on the call. Thank you. Great. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Here. Um, 
Yeah, Rich, I, I, um, you know, thank you for the comments and have, you know, throughout the the, the project, you uh, really brought a lot of uh, experience and and uh, insight to to a lot of these processes, which I've greatly appreciated. Um, you know, I think in in this instant, given um, in this instance, I should say, uh, you know, given the fact that we are um, under the FEMA budget, um, I don't know all the details of of, of uh, the Pettenfield Pavilion, but I think there was probably a, a claim to FEMA involved there, um, you know, which we don't have here. Um, I mean, I, I uh, tend to kind of agree with with Sal that um, you know there there. I mean, in my limited experience, I I can't really see how at this point um, anything actionable uh, on the part of the committee could come out of out of the audit process. But again, you know, I I don't have as much experience with this as 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 uh, many people on this call do. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a, a little concerned. Certainly, Penfield was a, an extraordinary um, event that caused the whole whole thing. One would hope that Sherman, in the actual geographical location, is not going to be subjected to um, the problems that Penfield had. Uh, certainly, because of the initial design aspect or initial construction aspect, in my opinion. Um, right. Um, that's that's yeah. I mean, it, it it does actually bring up the question is to what are the and and I'll I guess pose this question to to Mark and or Sal. I think either one of you um, could jump in. But what is the process for um, final? let's say, final sign-off with FEMA? Um, do we just submit – or what, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> how do we, we kind of close the loop with FEMA you know, and confirm that we've stayed under, um, under budget with them? Well, we, we've uh, – this is Sal. Uh, we've, we've had Collier's tracking, keeping – Track. We agreed at the beginning of the project which items are for um, uh, which are which items are FEMA items uh, for the FEMA mm -hmm. cap, and that's actually mm -hmm. um, I, I don't want to say it, it's checked by um, our FEMA enforcement officer, which happens to be Mr. Went in the Planning and Zoning Department. So. We're kind of like self-auditing as we're going along. The, the town hired colliers not only to keep those books, but that's also uh, it, it's an agent of the town telling another agent of the town what the number is. So we've been keeping, a tr we've been keeping track of that, and it's just a matter of uh, ac actually – Jim's already signed off because we have the zoning compliance. That would not have happened if we had a, zone, a, a FEMA issue. Um, Jim, uh, excuse me, Sal. Jim went to already signed off on us. He, we've gotten the, the we've gotten the certificate of zoning compliance, so that we can get the C of O, which we have in hand. That precedes getting the C of O. So we're yeah. We, we've we've rung the bell. We're, yeah, we're at okay. the end so, of the process. Okay. Again, this is this is, okay, this is my state. My state of position is that we the <clears throat> the dissolution of the committee. I'm I'm all for it. I wish we could do it. I'm just I'm just wondering whether it should not be sustained for a little bit longer, just to 
circumvent the problems that go into reconstructing a committee after it's been dissolved. I've been through that, and it was uh, an amazing uh, experience, to say the least. Um, uh, <clears throat> so that, that's my whole thing about all of this. And the committee, Chair, Mr. Chairman, you want to do that? Then that's fine. Um, I'm just thinking of the consequences of doing that and the possibilities of all of the things that can go wrong. Um, I, it, sorry, I, you know, I, I know that this is not the goal for tonight's meeting. Um, well, I mean, it is it is part of the agenda, albeit a little further down. But um, um, so I, you know, I think it's appropriate that we discuss it tonight. Um, so. Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we table the discussion for now, um, and then we'll, uh, I think, item 4E, um, is the request to disband the building committee. So why don't we um, take it up again when we get to that, um, to that point, and then we can, um, you know, I'd like to hear from the, uh, you know, the larger committee as well, um, and and especially uh you know um okay well, well, we get to that I'd just point. like to hear from the larger committee as well yeah. eric when we get to that point i'm going to bring up the fact that perhaps it does it have to be the entire committee perhaps it could be just something addressed as it occurs by the executive committee but that can be a, a point of discussion and a sense of the committee when you get to 4e exactly okay okay All right. Let's let's continue that discussion at that time. Um, okay, so moving to the next item on the agenda is an update from Colliers. Um, Mark, uh, anything you would like to share? Uh, Mark Schweitzer with Colliers. Uh, you stole stole my thunder of the OSCGNR update. Um, so that has been unfought, that has been filed, as Eric stated. There, I guess the only other item of note is there's a warranty issue that between uh, Silver Petroselli, Diversity, and their subcontractors, they're working through a uh, warranty item, and they will be doing, they're, they're trying to schedule some work to uh, re-insulate or insulate some condensate lines in the school, which is... It is a warranty call, so they are treating it as such, and they have been uh, attentive to it. But other than that, I do not have any further updates unless there are other questions from the committee. There's so there's it's not uh, there's not a dispute as to whether it is a warranty item or not. It's nope. just it is it is okay. it is not in dispute. It is. They need to schedule schedule the subcontractors, find the time to get in there to get it done. Okay. And this is uh, interior condensate line Correct. insulation or exterior? Interior. Cool. Okay. Interior. All right. All right. Um, okay. Um, so their diversity and, and their subs are um, uh, working with Sal and so Fairfield Public yes. Schools and to schedule a time to yeah. get in there and do that? Correct. Yes, they are. Yes. So, okay. So is this on the contractor or this, is this additional monies that have to be expended? It, it is not a charge for the project. It is a warranty issue. We will not see an invoice on this. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Um, and Mark, can you, I, I know you, uh, kind of emailed a, uh, executive summary on, um the financial statement um that you provided 
and I think that Meredith distributed um, to the committee. Um, can you just kind of reiterate that for the record? Yes. Um, I, Meredith sent out the financial status report, and it shows um, well, pending – well, it's showing – that the project was under budget by $243,000. Um, that is contingent upon the Silver Petroselli invoice um, that was not accounted for in it. Um, actually, the Silver Petroselli invoice was a result of the, this final accounting. There was a there was a balance on their um, contract, and we determined that it was. Uh, invoice mishap on their part. Um, they lost. They, they they reduced one of the line items, and then didn't put the the amount that they reduced it back on. Um, so that's how we discovered that. So the remaining balance, if if taken, uh, it'll be. Two hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars that will be will be under budget. Um, Meredith also sent out the FEMA report, and that had um, accounting for, uh, according to FEMA standards, what was considered eligible towards FEMA and what was ineligible, and then uh, compared it to the the max limit of half the appraised value of the property, and we were under that by $66,000. Uh, the this silver petrocelli invoice, if if paid, will not will still be $66,000 under the FEMA limit because the um, all soft costs are not to be accounted for in the FEMA calculation. So it's basically ineligible according to FEMA. So the, the FEMA mm -hmm. calculus remain at $66,000 under budget. And does it, does it factor into the OSCGNR um, no. submitted value? No, it does not. We don't. Okay. It does. We're not. We're not taking that seven hundred thousand dollars and applying it to the bottom line. That is, we're just looking at what the project costs and what we are under that budget. The reimbursement is outside of this accounting. So I guess if you were to add that in, you'd be, yeah, the project costs. Let's see. It was 3.2, so it ended up it would be 2.3 million is what the project cost. So. Right. So, so it was already kind of factored into whatever we submitted to SCJNR. Yes. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. We got it. OSCGNR only pays on, or only reimburses on what the town has paid. So, if you know, if for some reason there was, you know, we're not. Look, we're not seeking reimbursement for the budget line items. We're seeking on what the town has paid out for the project. Um, right, but the town is paying out on on this, right? Correct. Or will now be paying out on this. Yes, they would be paying out on this, yes. So do we need to adjust our submitted? The filing? 
Um, I guess I, we, we can talk to Sal as far as if, if it's worth going back to OSCGNR to amend the filing. No, not not for that amount. It's not worth it. Okay. What's the amount? Twenty one nine. Where's the decimal on that? Uh twenty one thousand nine hundred. Oh, and that's not worth going back to for that? No, it's not because the entire project is not eligible, so it's it's less than that, and it's twenty five percent of that lesser number it, it, um, we We close the project i I would not see it, and it actually would probably come up in the audit. They'll have the discrepancy, and that's when when the discussion would happen. All right. Well, you this is the yeah, thing that you do. Yeah. yeah, you do this constantly, Sal. This is your this is your ballywick, so to speak. You know, so I, I would respect your call on that uh, completely. Thank you. Yeah, agreed. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mark. Anything else? Um, any questions for Mark from the committee? Mark, what is your anticipated exte- uh, a period of time that you're going to expend on this project? To uh, Is this it, or, or do you think that there's more time involved? I believe this is it. I mean, if there is anything that comes back to an audit from the, you know, it becomes a it, we should have it on file and it, it's just a matter of taking care of it through with sale um you know if it is something yeah as 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 stated is before it, i mean if let it's, me ask you a question what i'm concerned about is it billable that's what i care about money that's what i care no, about no okay okay so it's not billable all right Um, all right, next item on the agenda is to hear, consider, and act upon the following items, first of which being the minutes of the regular meeting of June 1st, 2021. Um, wow, almost four months ago, um, last time we met. So I will make a motion to approve those minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Rich. Um, any comments or questions from the committee? Not hearing any. All those in favor of approving those minutes, say aye. 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 Uh, Rich, Jenna, I didn't hear it. Um, I think we were simultaneous. I said I. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, All right. All those opposed? None. Any abstentions? No. Rich, were you you and I? Did I miss that? He's and I. I heard him. Oh, you did? Uh, Okay. Sorry. Sorry. My phone dropped. Sorry, I'm sorry for the interruption, if I did. Okay. Um, getting a little feedback, uh, like a buzzing noise from someone. Yeah, I'm sorry. Someone. That's me. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh. I can, okay. I can hang up if, if it interferes too much. No, no, no. Fine. Um, um, 
I guess just uh, when in between votes, if you wouldn't mind putting yourself on mute, um, that might help. Um, all right, next item on the – sorry. You want me to put you on mute, Rich? Hello? You want me to put you on mute, Rich? Yes, go ahead. Put me on mute. Yes. All right, I'll do that, and I'll take you off when we vote. Go ahead, Eric. All right, thank you, Meredith. All right, next item on the agenda is um, invoice number 10204, dated July 31st, 2001, from Collier's Project Leaders in the amount of $1,405. I will make a motion to approve this invoice. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll second. All right. Thank you both. Um, any questions, comments from the committee? Not hearing any. All those in favor of approving this invoice say aye. 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 All right. Thank you all. I think it's an unanimous. Um, next invoice is 10-458, dated August 31st, 2001, from Collier's Project Leaders in the amount of $740. I will make a motion to approve this invoice. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Meredith. Any questions, comments from the committee? Not hearing any. Um, all those in favor of approving this invoice say aye. 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 All right. Thank you all. It's unanimous again. Um, any remaining invoices um, not presented here? Um, Eric, there is the one um, from Silver Petroselli. It's invoice number 21 2292, dated 10 1 21, in the amount of $29,100. I'll make an I'll make a motion to approve that. Okay. Is there a second? All right. I will second it. Um, and uh, I will. Well, any questions, comments from the committee? All right, I will. I, I'll open it up um, just for. Sure, did you have um, an opportunity to review that, yeah. Gerald? Gerald? Did we lose Gerald? No, he's on. I think he's trying to speak. Let's just give him a minute. I can see him trying. Uh, Gerald, I think um, Rich is asking you if you've had a chance to review the invoice in Silver Petroselli. Did you see that, or is that what you were emailing me about? Uh, no, I was emailing you about the FEMA. But, no, to answer the question about the, um, um, the Silver Petroselli, no, I actually I didn't have a chance to review it, but I was doing some quick math. So I'll have to get with Mark on it because – there was a slight discrepancy. We only have an open PO for $27,376.72, and the invoice is for 29100 Now, I know right out of the bat, I think it's the um, – there's a four, there's $1,146.28 for uh, printing costs, but that still leaves a small discrepancy. So I'm just going to have to get with Mark to reconcile the other variants. Gerald, I'm sorry, can you state again the amount? All right, so the amount that I have for an open, right now for the open purchase order is $27,376.72. Now, what we didn't cover was um, the reimbursables for the printing. So there's, um, on there is called printing services. So I know that we would be short on that. That's the 1000 one hundred and forty six dollars and twenty eight cents, but it still leaves us a variance. Um, so I'm going to have to just va validate with with Mark um, to see where else we're we're short. Okay. 
This is Mark Schweitzer with Colliers. Yeah, um, I was showing a balance on their contract of 29,038 in round numbers. So there's a right. discrepancy of about $62. $62. And I, I think it was marked up on their on print services that they were, did not take up. Um, I mean, what we could do is approve the amount for the balance of their PO and and leave it at that. So 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 the variance then is um, would leave the, the reimbursables. Right, but it would it would essentially leave sixty three dollars. Is that what I heard uh, on on? Build no, it would not cost. No, it would it would be fully billed. Their PO would be fully billed because I, by my accounting, I have twenty nine thousand thirty eight dollars, and the bill is for twenty nine thousand one hundred dollars. So there's a discrepancy. Okay. If we pay the full. Twenty nine one would be overpaying by sixty three dollars or sixty two dollars. Uh, okay. Um, uh, another Eric, way. Eric, if I, if I, if I, if I uh, Eric, if I can make a suggestion. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I, yep. would, I, I can hear. Leave it to those. Leave it to those two to resolve the problem, and since the, the, the amount is so minor in the overall scheme of things um, that I'm sure that they can resolve it without expending a lot of time and money on something that's minuscule. But that's only my suggestion, uh, your call. Yeah, I, I, I would tend to agree with you, um, especially since we have more than uh, 63 Sixty-eight dollars or sixty-seven dollars, whatever it is, in uh, available funds on this project. Um, right. So, um, Meredith, I, it sounded like you had a comment as well. Well, and that's fine. Or the other option is to approve twenty-seven thousand three hundred seventy-six dollars, and then you, Eric, you're still going to be chairman until this is disbanded. When it's disbanded, you could always approve the other money. Yeah, I could do that as well. Um, if we um, approve 29100 and it ends up being a little less than that, are we still paying 29100 or do we pay a little less than that? I guess that question is for Gerald. Yeah, yeah so, I, so I would work with Mark just to reconcile it. So I know we, for right out of the gate we, we didn't encumber um, the funds for the printing. We usually do that at the end. So, so that's what I'm saying. So that money, we would, if, as long as we can validate that that's 100%, we would add that back. Okay. So I just, so as Mark is saying, it's it's, it's going to come down to, to like pennies on this, or or they, right. say it's right. un, under probably under a hundred dollars. So, yeah. so it's a, it's, it's a basically business. I'll leave it. To, yeah, it's a business expense for the for the town to declare in yeah. now. So, <laughs> yeah. So just on the same right. county, that's right. Yeah. 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 So it's just going, just a matter, like I said, going back just to reconcile all the figures. And it's just a shame, like I said, if I had, if we had the invoice earlier, we could have had that done. But it, and you know, we just got it today, or not even today. We got it just minutes before the meeting, so it just <laughs> haven't really been right. time right. to really to fully validate all this. So if I'm if I'm understanding correctly, if we. Um, approve the invoice for a max of um what was it twenty nine what they billed, right? Twenty nine thousand one hundred dollars. Does right. that cover yeah, you could just say not to exceed that and then Mark and I will yeah. work on it just to reconcile it. And yeah. I'm so like I said, I think it's it was somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty nine thousand and 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 it's said we know it's not well we don't we we just can't get to that 100 number. We're off like they say just approximately 70 dollars. So if you say not mm -hmm. to exceed, we'll just have them validate it to, so our numbers all match. 
Okay, uh, this yeah. is Edith McCormick. I'm fine with that. I'll, I'll amend the emotion to pay Silver Petroselli in the um, in an amount not to exceed twenty nine thousand one twenty nine thousand one hundred dollars for invoice two one dash two two nine two. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Thank you, Rich. All right. Any additional questions or comments from the committee? All right. All those in favor of approving that invoice as amended by Meredith, say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. Uh, all those opposed. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Short sure. extension. Um, okay. Um, and then the, the last item, uh, as we mentioned earlier, item 4E is the re a request uh, of disbandment of the building committee. Um, so um, I think in order to open it up for conversation, I will make a motion to approve disbandment of the building committee. Do I have a second? It's Meredith, I'll second. All right. Um, all right, so I'll open it up to uh, discussion from the committee members um, at this time. So, uh, Rich, you, you raised um, some concerns earlier. Uh, do you want to kind of reiterate them now and um, for uh, discussion yes. amongst, um, amongst the committee well, members? I, very simply put, I, I recommend that it's not disbanded. I think that there's going to be some items that um, will need to be addressed um, in the not foreseeable future, um, and that's my opinion. Um, so I would vote not to disband. Um, so just given what we had discussed earlier um, and some of the, the time frames that, that Sal had laid out, um, in terms of closure of reimbursement from the state on, on other um, FPS projects. Um, Rich, what would your, uh, how long would you um, an, an envision date. keeping I, the... Yeah, an expiry yeah. date. Uh, um, just in <clears throat> additional uh, data about that, I don't know and whether this comes out in old business or new business, but I don't know, know whether uh, the business about the plaque, uh, the plaque has been resigned uh, at all. Uh, will that be requiring a vote later on, or is it just uh, uh, not going to happen so we don't have to really vote on it or anything else? Um, and I am concerned about FEMA, I, uh, I have many dealings with that organization, and I don't trust them. I'm sorry, I have to put that on the record that, uh, that, that they, uh, uh, <clears throat> anyhow, I'll, I won't go any further. Um, so having experience with that and the fact that I think that there are some ongoing um, matters that might need to be resolved uh, with the state regarding reimbursements, uh, I, I just don't think it's wise to terminate the, c the committee at this time. Having gone through the resurrection of a committee that was pre uh, prematurely um, ended and mayhem was the result. And that's all I'll say. Got it. And this is, um, I was actually just, can I ask a question? Um, yeah. If in the past, uh, sorry, <laughs> um, in the past, if any committees have been <clears throat> kept on uh, for, you know, reasons of an audit or a plaque situation for potentially up to six years, which it sounds like that's what goes back to the high school, um, you know, if there's been a duration like that where they've held on for those two purposes. I think so. Right. is best to uh, answer that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
Sal, in, in, in those um, cases that you cited earlier where reimbursement was, you know, six, seven years after the completion of the job, um, were the building committees for those jobs, uh, did, were they, um, did they remain intact and functional um, for that time period or? The, the, uh, the, the only, since I've been here, so this is, this is going back, we'll, we'll, we'll say uh, 16 years. Uh, the high school that building all? committee, that's all. Um, <laughs> the high school building committee uh, did not go before the Board of Selectmen to ask to be disbanded. They kind of, uh, you know, just faded into the night. Same thing with Tomlinson building committee there wasn't an mm -hmm. actual process um it, it, it was more with the uh, um uh, I, I think it was more mike tetro that started the process of actually having the building committees come back and say hey we're done uh you know give us our leave um mm -hmm. with that being said uh the uh, couple couple of things that i could can tell you the there's no foreseeable action for OSC GNR. There's no foreseeable action that the building committee would have to take for OSC GNR. Uh, for FEMA, we're not at the, not not to discount what what Rich Rich's concerns are, um, but we're not getting money from FEMA. So mm -hmm. you know it is a little bit different on that point because we're not. We're, we're not asking them for anything except that we're following their rules, and you know we we've accounted for that, and, and um, you know we're we're, com we're we're fairly comfortable with that um, that portion. Um, uh, an option can be there could be a couple options here. You you can uh, um, narrow down to the executive committee, which would be the Chairman, Vice Chairman, and uh, um, and Secretary for any other things that might come up. Um, you might ask for an opinion from the uh, first select women's office as to what they want you to do. Um, as for instance, in an audit, if there was a matter that came up after the building committee was disbanded, we still have a, a purchasing director. You know, Gerald's involved with that. I'm involved with those audits. The uh, finance department is, has an auditor on staff uh, that works through those uh, legalese uh, uh, audit type questions. Uh, so, you know, there's staff available and um, there's not necessarily anything that the building committee would do for those audit type items. So, uh, I mean, it's completely up to you whether you want to go to the board of selectmen uh, to ask or not, or you, you, you know, you might want to just go to the board of selectmen to ask, or to give them an update and ask what they want you to do next. If they want you to stand by that, that could be another, that could be another uh, tack that you could take. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Chairman, can I say something? Yep, go ahead, Rich. Uh, it's been my experience that this, um, and Sal can attest to this as well, uh, the, uh, because of the uh, lawsuits and, and, and malfeasance uh, that has been conducted recently by um, st uh, staff, Fairfield staff, the first select woman is very, very cautious, and we have to proceed with on other projects, submitting everything to the legal department uh, before anything gets approved. And it's, uh, it's a definite, it slows things down an awful lot, Sal can attest to this as well, um, but she is very, very much concerned about legalities. Now we can, now 
we get you could there's the other side of the coin you end this and I, I'll just speak fr- freely then you probably uh, limit the liability on on everybody's part that's in the committee because the committee is done so consider that when you make a judgment tonight you wish to be totally absolved for any further uh, legal prosecution as you might be as a committee member or not. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Um, Any other comments from the committee on the issue of disbandment? Um, okay. I mean, my, my feeling based on or my thoughts, based on what I have um, heard tonight and, and thank you, Sal and Rich, um, and um, predominantly for offering your uh, insight and, and breadth of experience um, uh, over the years. Um, I've, I believe that there is, based on what I've heard, that there's relatively little um, risk of, of actionable items um, requiring committee uh, approval or or action from the committee, um, and uh, I, for one, fall on on the side of disbandment at this time, um, given um, all of the. Uh, factors that we've discussed here tonight. Um, the fact that we're under the FEMA budget, um, so there should not be any issues there. Um, the fact that, uh, you know, the project's complete and we closed out all of these invoices. The fact that um, we have submitted uh, for OSCGR and have a good um, idea of uh, what our reimbursed value is, again, given um, you know, pending a, a final audit, um, that could be, uh, you know, as much as, um, you know, six or eight years away. Um, I think uh, it is prudent um, at this time to uh, disband the committee. Um, so if are there any other committee members that would like to express their opinion, thoughts, comments? If not, we'll put it to a vote. All right. Not hearing any. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, disband the Roger Sherman Building Committee uh, phase three um, at this time. Um, Eric, we already have a motion. You made the motion and I seconded it. So we have the discussion. So oh, we did. If there's no further um, okay. comments, then, then we can vote. All right. Thank you, Meredith. Um, so uh, with that, um, all in favor of disbanding the committee, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Abstain. Who's abstaining? Okay, all those, all those abstaining. Uh, uh, Richard Special abstains. Okay. And then, Brian, did you approve? Did you vote in favor? I was in favor. I said aye. 
Okay, so I have in favor Lane Caffini, Trotter, McCormick, and special abstaining. Correct. Okay, so motion passes. Great. Okay. Um, moving along, um, old business. Is there any open business anyone would like to raise? Not hearing any. New business? Not hearing any there. Next item, public comment. Is there anyone from the public that would like to make a comment at this time? Can you hear me? Yep. Thank you, Christine. Go ahead. Yep. Hi, Christine Vitale, Chair of the Board of Education. On behalf of the Board and the community, I want to thank you all for your service on this project. Um, you know, it is, took longer than expected due to the pandemic, and I appreciate your, your diligence, your hard work, and your dedication. Um, the school looks beautiful, and I've heard from so many families that they're so appreciative of just having the air conditioning and the mechanical means of fresh air, and it really has just made an already wonderful school even better. So thank you for your service, and um, I hope that I can uh, loop you in for a, a future building committee. <laughs> <laughs> No takers? Thank you, Christine. Thank you. I appreciate that. Eric, um, if I could add... <laughs> Eric, that? I would just like to add, uh, actually to echo what Christine just said on behalf of all the uh, Sherman staff and, and students and families, uh, we deeply appreciate all the energy expended on everyone's behalf. And I think moreover, the, the thoughtfulness in every step along the way. I really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure. Again, while it's taken a little longer, uh, it's been for, for good cause, and uh, we thank you, um, you know, immensely. Thank you, Dr. Matt. And, and from my end, thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure working with all of you. Thank you for your service. Thank you, pal. Um, and even though I'm not part of the public, I, I will uh, – I, I do want to say it's, it has been an absolute pleasure um, working with all the, uh, the members of the committee, um, Dr. Banner, Sal, Gerald, um, Christine, um, and um, uh, Drew, and, and, you know, the entire committee and everyone uh, that has uh, um, sat with us and dedicated their time on these Tuesday evenings um, for the past two years, uh, you know, as a first time committee member and, and, and chair at that, it's, um, it's really been a uh, um, uh, pleasant and fulfilling uh, experience to work with all of you. And, and as uh, a father who has two children uh, in the school district, um, it's very encouraging uh, to know that there are uh, people in this town and in Fairfield Public Schools that are as dedicated um, as uh, all of you are, um, as well as um, uh, the volunteers that, that volunteer for uh, building committees like this to uh, ensure that we have uh, the best uh, facilities and services for our children. So, um, thank you, thank you all. It's 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 been very uh, uplifting. So, uh, if there are no further comments from uh, the public or from the committee, um, I will make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All right. It's unanimous. Thank you all so much. It's been Good wonderful. Night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you Thank very night. much. Take Thank care. You. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. 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 Good night. Bye-bye.